Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRNAM for Friday, March 1st, 2024. And our top story today, seniors helping seniors. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Tina Snyder of Safe Haven Equine Warriors, or SHU. Tina, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. I'm so thrilled to be here, Jeff. This is really a privilege to be with you today. Uh, it's fun, and and we've you know we've talked about horses and and the pleasure that they and also therapy that they give to a lot of people. Uh, and you run, um, I think this is a rather unique organization. Tell us a little bit about SHU, what your what your mission is, and and um, I think a lot of people may not be aware that there are horses that you know at the end of the at the end of their lives get put into uh, kill shelters for lack of a better term. Yeah, and it's not even necessarily the end of their lives. So SHU stands for Safe Haven Equine Warriors. So we're a 501c3 in Sykesville, Maryland. Uh, we've been in business since 2017. Uh, personally, I've been rescuing horses since I was a child. I kind of came up uh, in that, going to the backside of the racetracks and getting horses that were going to go to the meat trucks and so on and so forth. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that there's something called the Slaughterhouse Pipeline. When I first started talking publicly about it, uh, that was about 2014. And I would start out by saying 150,000 American horses will be shipped to Canada and Mexico each year to be processed for human consumption. And that's like a huge mouthful to say. And fortunately, uh, those numbers have been reduced to this year. It's going to be in 2024. It will be under 20,000 horses. We don't have the numbers from 2023 yet, but it will probably be under 20,000 horses. So we've made tremendous strides. A lot of it has just been education, advocacy, and supporting people. Uh, everybody thinks that the horse that goes to slaughter is is old or lame or blind or mean or has one eye or three legs or something. And that's not that's not true at all. A lot of times these horses lose their homes uh, because people get into trouble, uh, frankly. And if it's not a horse that has great market value, uh, it falls by the wayside. If you can't take care of your horse, if you lose your job, um, you lose your farm, uh, somebody dies, you can't just call one of these rescues or call animal control because everybody stays full all the time. And very few horse rescues will take what they call owner surrenders. We're one of the few that we do take owner surrenders. Uh, even just recently, we took, we took on four horses as an owner lost his job, foreclosed on his property. These horses had no place to go. They were facing either going to what they call the kill buyer auctions where horses are sold by the pound um, or being euthanized. And fortunately we found really good homes for three of them. And the fourth horse is now with us at the main farm until we find a good home for him. Nothing wrong with these horses. Uh, they haven't been dealt with, they haven't been worked with in a long time. They need refresher courses. They needed a lot of weight. They needed to see a vet. They needed to see a farrier. Um, they just needed to be brought back into health and then great homes could be found for them. Uh, yeah, and, so, you know, so that's that's a lot of what we do. And we have resources to help people when they get in trouble. And a lot of a lot of times, honestly, the um, the older population, they get to a point where they can't take care of these horses anymore. And sometimes they just don't have that. What if plan? So we've taken a lot of horses under those circumstances as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was going to ask you, um, based on your comment, it didn't sound like these are horses that are at the end of their lives. It could be any horse. And, right. and, and, you know, it's just rather unfortunate because if you think about it, you know, say that you lose your, your real estate, you lose the ability to house or, or a job. There's somebody who could benefit from, if you can't support the animal anymore, you can't afford the feed, you can't muck the stalls, you can't do all the things. There's a, probably a little child, a child who wants to, to learn. How difficult is it yeah. to go to, to take these animals in, which I, you're doing at your own expense, meaning the expense of the organization, and then right. re, retrain them 
uh, to, to work with young children or, or to fill, fit a different role? Uh, well, well, it that's such an individual question. Um, we've done everything from wild mustangs um, to like the the horses that you see in the background here, uh, and these are older, and they just needed to they just needed a little help. Uh, our average turnaround time is about fourteen months. By the time we get them, we get them healthy again. And we go through our own training process, so there's no holes in it. So basically, when we adopt an animal out, it's safe. It's exactly what we tell you um, that he or she is. Uh, we have an adoption process where if you are looking for a horse and you contact us and we'll tell you what we have that kind of fits your experience and whether it be a child, adult, trail riding, competitive riding, whatever it is. Um, and then you come and meet the horse and we make sure it's a good fit. We check your references. We go check on wherever that horse is going to be living. Uh, all our horses are microchipped. Um, and we guarantee that we will take that horse back at any time during their life. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's 10 years later, it's something happens, whatever it is, it's just a matter of a phone call, uh, no guilt, no shame. We want to give these horses a safety net for the rest of their life. And then we have some horses that are not rideable, not they're a little more in the special needs category. And they go out to homes as fosters. Um, and a foster is never signed over to them. We continue to technically own them. And that way, all the uh, expenses for that animal is considered a donation. It's it's tax deductible, depending on if your you know, accountant can go that way with it. Um, and we support, you know, any end of life cost, medication, so on and so forth. So we have a lot of different avenues to get horses in in homes, a lot of different processes. Yeah, and I was going to say, as you were describing this, and don't take this the wrong way, but it almost sounds like, you know, uh, you want a dog or a, or some other, a cat or a pet. I mean, you you can either go and get go to a purebred, right? And people can go choose to go purebred, the purebred route, or like my wife and I did, we went to the local shelter uh, and picked up the animal. And we've had, you know, great, you, you, same thing. You get to socialize with it. You learn whether or not the animal is, is a good fit. Will it fit in a multi-cat uh, environment. Uh, so it's, it seems very similar to that. So if you're, I guess if you're watching and you're interested in having your child learn how to do, do trail riding or do some type of riding mm -hmm. and you don't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a, uh, a purebred horse, this is a great, especially you wouldn't know how to ride anyway. That's right. You, you, you'd have to still learn, break in the animal. So you, you, you're still, why not learn together? Right. Well, you know, we, we don't necessarily advocate a lot of learn together because we have a expression in the horse world called green and green equals black and blue. Uh, <laughs> so what we want for, so we, when you look at people adopting horses, they're much less expensive than if you go out and get, spend twenty fifty thousand dollars on a horse they're very very expensive you know a lot of times they are a little bit older or they do have a you know they come with a little bit of baggage but for the first time horse owner for the person who wants that just that gentle horse for their child they want to do some light trail riding a lot of times it's an older person that's come back to riding um, after a lifetime of raising kids having careers so on and so forth and now they just want that nice pet um these horses fit that bill wonderfully. They're not they're not super expensive uh, to get. We're in business to find horses great forever homes, not to make make bank on an adoption fee. Like if I was selling a horse, so yeah. adoption and the sale of a horse is very very different. Um, we rely on donations and community support. We don't make profit on adoption fees. We're not trying to get back the monies that we put into these horses. That's that's not the name of the game for us. If you go and buy a horse, somebody is trying to get out from under the responsibility of the horse and make a profit. If you would adopt a horse, somebody's trying to find the best possible future forever home for that animal and we'll guarantee it stand behind it 
and has done, you know, the animal is healthy. It's well-trained. Like I said, a horse coming out of shoe is exactly what you tell it. We tell you that that horse is, and if for any reason it's not working out, we will always take those horses back. So it's, it's a, it's very, very different adoption yeah, we'll versus sale, sale or, or buying. Thanks, Tina. I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you can volunteer and get involved with Seniors Helping Seniors and a lot more. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Tina Snyder of Safe Haven Equine Warriors, or SHU. Tina, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around this morning. Glad to be here. Yes, it's a really fun conversation. Um, let's talk about, you know, the horses that we were talking about. They can serve so many purposes. Uh, veterans can use them. Uh, I know they use them for PTSD therapy. Right. Um, yep. it be, beyond just riding the animal or taking care of the animal, let's talk about Seniors for Seniors. This is a very interesting program and one of the reasons why I reached out to you. Tell us about Seniors for Seniors. I have an idea of what it is, but I want to hear it directly from you. So it's a pretty unique program. When we try to rescue horses that would otherwise be going to slaughter or just starving to death in the field, mm -hmm. uh, we there's a large population of older horses that are no longer rideable. They're sweet, they're kind, they have a lot of love and knowledge to give, uh, but they're very difficult to get into homes because they're not rideable. So we have found that there's there's this really good niche to take these older horses and match them up with seniors um, and retired folks and veterans and people that are not interested in becoming top level equestrians or necessarily riding. Uh, they just really want that friendship, that bond, that kinship uh, that a horse can bring a human and with our seniors program and our older animals, it, it helps us a little bit with the income stream to try to keep taking care of these animals. Because if you just get yourself, you know, if you just collect a bunch of old horses, all of a sudden everything can come to a grinding halt. Um, so this way we have our seniors that are involved and they can, they can do fosters, they can come in in groups, uh, however they like to, and they interact with these horses. And the horses get the grooming, they get the love, they get the attention that oftentimes is a stretch for us to have the time to really do that with each individual horse on a daily basis. Uh, and the seniors and the retired folks, they just get something really, really, really special. Now, we've had people that have come in um, 
and they've been quite happy just to sit in a bench uh, at the fence and talk to their favorite horse. And that's absolutely fine because believe me, that horse will talk back in their own language. And then we have others that want to come in and they want to do some grooming. They want to lead the horse. We have all kinds of what we call trust training, which are like little obstacle courses um, that you can just lead the horses through at a nice slow walk. It helps them learn to trust again because most of the horses that we get have been through circumstances where people haven't handled them well. So trust is a really big thing. And we have found that a lot of times the senior population uh, has the time, they have the patience, they go nice and slowly. And if a horse needs to stand there and, you know, smell a flower box for five minutes, they're more than happy to do that with the horse. So they're really, really helping the horses with their their patience and their kindness. And the horses are really helping them because it gives them, you know, a a purpose. I mean, it's a really fun thing for them to do. It's physical exercise to whatever degree they're able. Um, you know, we have, I mean, I have a, a, a young lady at 73 years old that she comes in here and she helps with our used tag sales. Uh, she just sorts stuff, tags stuff, does all the, the, um, the little tax shop things in the flea markets and uh she does that as a volunteer and then she also will sponsor a horse sometimes uh, a new one that comes in and she'll physically engage with that horse so it looks a lot of different ways you know we love to have groups that come in for two to three hours um and we have them together work with the horses uh and we have a little tea time under the trees we like to call it uh and they learn about us and the, the stories of all the different horses. Um, you know, and some of them go on to be regular volunteers and help with farm chores. So we're pretty much open to, you know, letting it kind of uh, work out the way it needs to for every individual person. But, uh, you know, the human seniors helping the horse seniors and the horse seniors helping the human seniors. It's just a beautiful, magical thing to see. And Tina, to that end, if you're if you want to volunteer, uh, you talked about donations and accepting donations. They can go to the shoe website. What about uh, vol volunteer? And and also, if you have a horse that you're looking to, um, you you don't want to support anymore for whatever reason. How do you, how do you get in touch to to do those things? How do you get in touch? I guess the first volunteer, then two to to uh, bring a horse to shoe. Yeah, well, you can you can just get a hold of me directly. You can email me at tina at safehavenequinewarriors.org or info at safehavenequinewarriors.org. Uh, you can go on our, our website um, and there'll be a lot of information there. If you'd like to donate, if you'd like to help us, uh, we have a capital campaign going right now. We are maxed out on our little farm. We're trying so hard to get on a larger facility, which is going to expand our ability to have sanctuary for a lot of these older and special needs horses and expand our programs. Uh, so that would be really the best way to do it. Or honestly, I give everybody my phone number who wants it. If somebody would like to call me and discuss all the various options and things we can do for them, my number is 410-718-1806. Uh, whether you want to volunteer, uh, you want to come in and have what we call an equine enrichment experience, bring your bring your group of friends in, uh, and we'll, we'll have a really nice experience. Uh, experience for you to have. If you have a horse that you need to rehome, please reach out to us and we will help you. We can't always physically take every single horse, but we will network. We'll get you what you need. Um, we'll absolutely do our best to support and assist you to make sure that that horse gets a really good home the next leg of their journey. Yeah, really, really important work. Tina, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Great. Can't wait. Thanks for having me, Jeff. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle wellness finance tech, so much more at all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. 
Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Then visit our website. Hey, we're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRN Weekly. Jane King will be here joining us from the NASDAQ, and we'll have a very special guest, and we'll get some really good information of what happened in the market this week. You're not going to want to miss it. I don't think you will. I don't think you should. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.